Building my own keyboard must be one of the most rewarding side projects I've ever done. I'm a software engineer, and in this video, I'll take you through how I built my keyboard from scratch, the wins, the mistakes, and the steps that actually helped me finish it. So let's not rush this story and start from the beginning. When I started this project, I spent quite a few days researching different types of keyboards. I began with the ones I was familiar with and the only ones I knew at the time, but I quickly found myself down a deep rabbit hole. I realized that compromises were necessary, so I decided to define a clear set of goals and began working towards them. I did some thinking and ended up with three major goals. The first goal I wanted to focus was ergonomics. After researching a bit, I realized there was one small feature that could greatly improve my posture while typing, splitting the keyboard itself. And this was the first feature that emerged from the ergonomic goal. The second feature that emerged was reducing the number of keys on the keyboard. I realized I could use different layers within the same keyboard, which allowed me to reduce the key count to 34 without compromising functionality. The last feature that came from the ergonomic goal was improving the layout of the keys and making it ortholinear. Moving on to the second goal, I realized I wanted a simple design. This was important because my intention was not only to implement the software, which I am more familiar with, but also to design the hardware. With this goal in mind, I came up with three new features. The first feature is that the keyboard will be wired. This eliminates the need for batteries or a Bluetooth module and simplifies the hardware design. Unfortunately, I don't own or have access to a 3D printer, and I'm also not familiar with 3D design. Therefore, I decided not to include a case or plate for the keyboard, meaning the keys would sit directly on the PCB. Finally, I wanted the keyboard to be silent. As a software engineer, I need to be able to work on the computer every day without disturbing others and being fired. So this feature was a must. I was very excited to start designing the hardware, but it was my first time and I didn't know where to start. So I reduced the scope to understanding how a keyboard works. Essentially, a keyboard is a set of key switches. So let's simplify it and first design a one key keyboard. Imagine a simple electrical circuit with a light connected to a battery. If we now add a key switch, we open the circuit, current will not flow and the light will turn off. So, how do we close the circuit? Well, if we press the key switches, the circuit is closed again and the light turns on. Once we release the key switch, the light will turn off. Simple, right? But our goal is to build a keyboard, not a lamp. Therefore, we need something to detect when the circuit is open or closed. That's all we need to create our one key keyboard. So, to detect the state of a circuit, let me introduce you to a microcontroller. Simply put, a small computer in a chip. A microcontroller has exposed pins and some of them are general purpose input-output pins or GPIOs. GPIOs can be programmed as input to detect signals such as the presence of voltage and they can also be programmed as outputs to send these signals. If we substitute the batteries for our microcontroller, we can now remove the light and use the GPIOs to detect when a key switch is pressed. We'll then need to provide a signal on one end and program a GPIO to detect the signal on the other end. As simple as that. We have just designed the basics of a one key keyboard, but our split has 17 keys which means that if we want to scale our design, we will need 17 input GPIOs. There is a trick though to reduce the number of GPIOs needed. 
Let's first scale our design to 10 keys in two rows. Instead of using 10 GPIOs, we'll assign one output GPIO to each column of keys and one input GPIO to each row. Then, we'll iterate through the five columns, turning the signals on and off to detect on the input GPIO if a key is pressed. If we apply this approach to our 17 key split design, we only need nine GPIOs in total. Although this approach reduces the number of GPIOs, it introduces a new problem, key jamming. This occurs when we are iterating through the columns and press two keys at the same time. If there is nothing preventing the current from flowing along the switch, it might end up in another row. To solve this problem, we introduce diodes. Diodes allow current to flow only in one direction. Placing the diodes after each key switch will prevent the current from flowing in the opposite direction. Now we solved all the problems with our keys. Let's now move to the communication between both our splits. Each half of the keyboard will have its own microcontroller, but only one will be connected to the PC. I considered three communication options between the halves UART, I2C, and SPI. After weighting the numbers of wires and devices supported, I chose I2C for the communication. Finally, I had to choose a microcontroller. I searched for an affordable option with enough GPIOs to support everything I needed, and ultimately, I decided on the PPCO. At this stage, I had all the components, but I still needed to design my PCB. I watched a couple of YouTube tutorials on KiCad and began placing my components. I must say that at first I felt quite lost, but once I got the hang of it, it was really fun. When I felt my design was ready, I ordered the PCB, waited for two long weeks until... At this point, I only had to solder and assemble the components. I will now let you enjoy the moment. The mechanical keyboard community is amazing. There are tons of open source projects to create the necessary firmware, but in my case, I wanted to take this chance and design my own software architecture. It's far from perfect, but I learned a lot doing it. I am not going to go into a lot of detail, but for the firmware, as a base, I used FreeRTOS. It's a real-time operating system that provides everything necessary to create tasks and communicate between them. There are only four main tasks for this project. The first one is called Keystrokes. Probably you guessed it, but it's the one responsible for initializing the GPIOs for the columns and the rows. After that, its purpose is to loop detecting if a key has been pressed. Once it detects a key pressed, it sends the key to the next task, called the brain. The brain is responsible for knowing which split the firmware is on and if it needs to communicate with the computer or with the other half. If it needs to communicate with the other half, the key will be sent to a task called communication internal. Otherwise, it will be sent to a task called communication external. Communication internal task initializes the I2C protocol and sends or receives keystrokes to or from the other half. On the other side, 
communication external task is focused on communicating with the computer. It initializes the USB protocol and sends the key it receives through it. I try to follow a modular approach with the tasks to add flexibility for further projects. For example, if I want to add Bluetooth, I only need to change communication external task. Apart from that, there are also some minor helper functions to deal with LEDs or USB callbacks. And I also included configuration files to easily define the layers. But this is actually all you need. I think it's pretty simple and you can peek at the details in GitHub if you are interested in it. I will start saying I am very happy with the result. I've been using the keyboard every day at work for some months now and it's almost everything I plan it to be. One crucial thing was to have a clear set of goals from the beginning and this helped move through the different phases of the project in a smooth and natural way. There is only a couple of things that did not go as planned. The first one, I designed the board to have a couple LEDs to indicate the current layer. I now know I was overconfident in my abilities at soldering for the first time. Definitely, the LEDs were too small and I could not do it. Second, the jack connector in the PCB should be closer to the edge to easily connect the cable. On the good side though, the first thing is that I learned a lot during this project. For example, about PCB design, soldering or software architecture. The second thing is that I was able to build my own keyboard on a budget. Here you can see the complete list of materials and the total amount was less than $35. Third and last, I discovered a new hobby that may last longer than I expected. Thanks for watching till the end and see you soon.